Maccabim Shani, 2 Maccabees 9. About that time came Antiochus, rather, Antiochus, with dishonor out of the country of Persia. For he had entered the city called Persepolis and went about to rob the temple and to hold the city, whereupon the multitude, running to defend themselves with their weapons, put them to flight. And so it happened that Antiochus, being put to flight of the inhabitants, returned with shame. Now when he came to Akhtab, rather, Akhbatani, news was brought him what had happened unto Nicanor and Timotheus. Then, swelling with anger, he thought to avenge upon the Yahudim the disgrace done unto him by those that made him flee. Therefore commanded he his chariot man to drive without ceasing and to dispatch the journey, the judgment of Elohim now following him, for he had spoken proudly in this sort, that he would come to Yerushalayim and make it a common burying place of the Yahudim. But Yahuwah Savaoth, the Elohim of Yashadael smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. For as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remediless, rather, remediless came upon him, and sore torments of the inner parts. And that most justly, for he had done tormented, rather, for he had tormented other men's bowels with many and strange torments. Howbeit he nothing at all ceased from his bragging, but still was filled with pride, breathing out fire in his rage against the Yahudim, and commanding to haste the journey. But it came to pass that he fell down from his chariot, carried violently, so that having a sore fall, all the members of his body were much pained. And thus he that a little afore thought he might command the waves of the sea, so proud was he beyond the condition of man and weight, rather, and weigh the high mountains in a balance, was not cast on the ground, and carried in a horse litter, showing forth unto all the manifest power of Elohim, so that the worms rose up out of the body of this wicked man, and while he lived in sorrow and pain, his flesh fell away, and the filthiness of his smell was noisome to all his army. And the man that thought a little afore he could reach to the stars of heaven, no man could endure to carry for his intolerable stink. Here, therefore, being plagued, he began to leave off his great pride, and to come to the knowledge of himself by the scourge of Elohim, his pain increasing every moment. And when he himself could not abide his own smell, he said these words, It is meet to be subject unto Elohim, and that a man that is mortal should not proudly think of himself if he were Elohim. This wicked person vowed also unto Yahuwah, who now no more would have mercy upon him, saying thus, that the holy city to the which he was going in haste to lay it even with the ground, and to make it a common burying place, he would set at liberty. And as touching the Yahudim, whom he had judged not worthy so much as to be buried, but to be cast out with their children, to be devoured of the fowls and wild beasts, he would make them all equals to the citizens of Athens. And the holy temple, which before he had spoiled, he would garnish with goodly gifts, and restore all the holy vessels with many more, and out of his own revenue defray the charges belonging to the sacrifices. Yea, and that also he would become a Yahudi himself, and go through all the world that was inhabited, and declare the power of Elohim. But for all this, his pains would not cease, for the just judgment of Elohim was come upon him. Therefore, despairing of his health, he wrote unto the Yahudim the Safer underwritten, containing the form of a supplication after this manner. Antiochus, king and governor to the good Yahudim, his citizens wishes much joy, health, and prosperity. If ye and your children farewell, 
and your affairs be to your contentment. I give very great thanks to Elohim, having my hope in heaven. As for me, I was weak, or else I would have remembered kindly your honor and good will, returning out of Persia and being taken with a grievous disease. I thought it necessary to care for the common safety of all. Not distrusting my health, but having great hope to escape this sickness, but considering that even my father, at what time he led an army into the high countries, appointed a successor, to the end that if anything fell out contrary to expectation, or if any tidings were brought that were grievous, they of the land, knowing to whom the state was left, might not be troubled. Again, considering how that the princes that are borderers and neighbors unto my kingdom wait for opportunities and expect what shall be the event, I have appointed my son, Antiochus, king, whom I often committed and commended unto many of you, when I went up into the high provinces, to whom I have written as follows. Therefore I pray and request you, to remember the benefits that I have done unto you generally and in special, and that every man will be still faithful to me and my son. For I am persuaded that he, understanding my mind, will favorably and graciously yield to your desires. Thus, the murderer and blasphemer, having suffered most grievously as he entreated other men, so died he a miserable death in a strange country in the mountains. And Philip, that was brought up with him, carried away his body, who also fearing the son of Antiochus, went into Mitzrayim to Ptolemy, Philometor. <laughs>